Hi there, I'm Heidi Swap, and today we are going to do a little bit of mixed media play. And what I have here, we're going to be using my screen prints, we're going to be using some stencils, color shine, and the mink. So what I'm, I'm here in my regular studio, but we're going to be using this camera so that you can see a little bit, get a little bit closer on the project. So first of all, let me show you kind of what we're going to be making. I have been playing around with these, these are like little watercolor paper discs. I found these at the paper source. These are cream colored. And as you kind of look at these different samples, this is just me kind of playing and I seriously had the best time. So what you're seeing here is some screen printing. The floral is a screen print. I'll show you that in a minute. Then I've gone in, added some color shine detail in the flowers, in the petals, and I've even used some stenciling that allowed me to kind of draw that color into the painting. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to paint. So here is what you're going to need. Um, first of all, it's really important with um, some of the mediums that, that we're going to be playing with that you have a nonstick mat. This white mat is uh, from my mink collection. It's really easy to clean. It's a really nice shade of white that um, is easy to take care of. So make sure that you have a nonstick mat. The next thing that we're going to be using is I kind of just pulled out some of my favorite screen prints. This one is from the Mink Collection. This one is from the Gallery Wall Collection, available at Michael's. Um, this stencil is also available at Michael's in the Gallery Wall. And this is actually an old one, if you'll remember. Um, you might still have it on hand. But anyway, those are the stencils that we're going to kind of play with today. Um, I also have some art screen ink. I'm using the gold. Any of my art screen inks are reactive with the mink. The mink is kind of going to be our last step, but you need art screen ink and then whatever your favorite colors of color shine are. Um, I'm specifically going to be using this hot pink, which is a brand new color and it just watercolors beautifully. And also you can't go wrong with some gold. I'm using blush, Georgia peach, white, and then I have a couple options for green if I want to add some green into the leaves and things like that. So we'll kind of see how it goes as we play along here. Okay, we're going to start out using this screen. It's available, as I said, in the mink collection and it looks like some hand-drawn florals. And what's fun about the screens is that you can really kind of position them wherever you want. They are sticky back and that helps them stay um, put as you're using them. So I'm going to just go ahead and place that right over my paper and just put a little bit of the screen ink on my nonstick mat and then I'm just using this scraper. You could really use like a credit card or a piece of chipboard or whatever. This is a really easy quick process. You're just going to scrape the, the screen print ink over that area. I like to kind of clean off all the excess. Then you're simply going to lift off the screen and set this piece aside so it can dry for a minute. And then immediately you want to wipe the screen. I'm just using a wet wipe. You want to wipe down the front really fast. Lift it up. Some of the screen ink will have come out. And then you'll also want to wipe off the back. Now, when you're done, when it's clean, set it upside down back onto its, uh, its backer sheet and allow it to dry. Okay, so this does not take very long to dry, but you're going to want to make sure it's totally dry before you move on. This is nice and dry. All right. Now, because I'm going to use these color shine as a, kind of a watercolor, I'm just going to go ahead and spray some of my color shine right onto my mat, and I'll be really using this as kind of a palette. This is a paintbrush from my Mink paintbrush set. 
Um, the bristles start out white, but you can see that I've been using them with this super hot pink color. And uh, so it has tinted it a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of start by adding some water directly to the paper. And, you know, really this is kind of just um, experimental. You kind of, you might want a darker color or a lighter color. And so you can see that that will just immediately grab the color and start uh, dispersing it in the water. And I'm just going to kind of, with the side of my brush, kind of fill in some of these petals. You can also kind of use different colors. And as you just kind of touch it, it will absorb and blend right there on your paper. One of the things that I've learned is that if you don't really like where the color is sitting, you can kind of grab it and move it. You can see that I was actually trying to move it off of the center a little bit. Um, also, if you feel like something is kind of too dark, you can add more water and redistribute that color or borrow some of that color and move it to another, another place. So what I'm doing here is just kind of filling in the background. I've used a mixture of the seafoam color shine and a little bit of the mint green, the original mint green, but kind of any tone of green will work here. And you can see that I've really scaled that color back. Um, sometimes if I get too much color in, I'll go in, I'll let it soak for a second and then kind of dab it up with a paper towel, which will help me to control the amount of color that I'm getting. Um, I want to show you another fun way to create a little bit of texture, but then also deliver some color to create this background. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to dry this a little more first. One of the things that's really fun about watercoloring with, with the color shine, and I'm going to try to show you is can you see this amazing amount of gold shimmer and the shimmer that is in all of I mean that shine is in all of the color shines but look at how just adding that mixing in that gold gives you that amazing and I really love this kind of puddling effect that is happening in the background so let me just show you one more fun way and what I'm going to do is actually lay down this stencil over my project and I'm going to take the sea foam. I'm going to spray right from left to right over this and I'm kind of holding it because I don't want a lot of um, space between the stencil and my project. I really only want the color shine to just go right here and fill in the background of my piece right here. So. I'm going to make sure that it's spraying, and I'm just going to do a really quick, I know that you barely even saw that, but I press down and move my hand evenly, a quick across there, because that will give me a nice, even, little, teeny, tiny texture of a dot. Now let me show you why this is kind of fun. I'm just going to kind of pick up some of my excess there. I am going to dry it. Okay. Now I could certainly stop here. This card is filled in. You, we have this really fun, like a little bit of a stencil texture on one side, kind of a filled in background, really beautiful shine happening. Um, but it is also fun now that these little dots are dry. Remember what I said about being able to reactivate them. So I'm kind of going in here, a little bit of depth, a little bit of blue in there. And with a little bit of water, and I could also mix it with the gold, is I could simply just paint over these dots and it kind of blends them in and gives me this wonderful color in the background. 
along with a little hint of the texture. So I'm just going to kind of fill in a little bit more of these dots around the flowers. Another kind of tip for blending, of course, is the white color shine. And if you ever want to kind of get lighten up, maybe you feel like you've got too much color in one place, this white color shine can go in and it can help you distribute some of that color. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my mink because as I have mentioned, the art screen, the little flowers that we put down first, is reactive with the foil machine. And uh, so obviously you could stop right here. You can see that because it is obviously a watercolor and I've been playing with water, the disc is kind of um, warpy. The, the paper is warped a little bit. And if you wanted to go ahead and run that through your mink, um, it would completely iron your paper out. So it is totally um, flat. So I am going to go ahead and add some foil. I'm going to try to do this so I don't get color shine on my carrier sheet. I'm going to add a little bit of foil, some of this champagne foil, to my piece. I have this on a three heat setting because I'm just using the paper. Okay, we're going to just go ahead and open this and you can see how fun that is because it has totally brought forward all of those lines. So what happens is immediately your watercolor drops to the background and the florals over the top kind of drop comes to the foreground. So I love that. This can now be um, a beautiful card. It's, it's actually so gorgeous, it's even like frame worthy. Um, fun to put in your planner or um, you know any number of things. Plus obviously you could do this onto a scrapbook page or any type of a background. Just a really fun um, way to mix art screen inks, color shine, and the mink. Okay. My little finished piece is done, and I have to tell you that it's really such a relaxing, wonderful experience just to kind of paint and let, let it be fun, let it uh, not be perfect. I don't think that there's a, a perfect set way. I'm not a watercolor artist. I've just really had fun um, kind of filling in those lines. It's really um, and spectacular results, no matter what color uh, you use. Anyway, so. Make sure that you like this video if you want to see more of this and you subscribe right down below so that you won't miss a thing. Grab yourself some color shine, some art screens, and make pretty stuff.